Today I'm going to talk about the science of serotonin, which falls in our playlist Science of Everyday Things. And people mostly know serotonin as a neurotransmitter, so it means that it can give signals from the brain to the nerves. However, there's much more to serotonin, and I will discuss that in the video and also give an introduction on the type of research that we do on serotonin. Here I'll show you how serotonin is produced, but also how it's metabolized. Well, the chemical name for serotonin is 5-hydroxytryptamine and is actually produced from an essential amino acid, which is L-tryptophan. An essential amino acid means that you have to get it from food sources, so it's not something that we can produce in our body. So some sources of tryptophan include, for instance, oats, bananas, milk, cheese, bread, chicken, and many, many, many more. So we mostly think of serotonin as a neurotransmitter that carries messages between the brain and the nerve cell, but also it can act as a hormone. And obviously there's a family of neurotransmitters, and I will show you briefly later on how some of these are connected. But surprisingly, when you think of a neurotransmitter, actually the majority of serotonin is not found in the brain. It's only 10% in the brain, and the other 90% is in your gastrointestinal tract. So that seems to imply, and this is what you will see when you look at the functions of serotonin, that it's much more than just a simple uh, neurotransmitter. The serotonin has a whole range of functions, as you can see, and this is not all of them. So even though only 10% is in your brain, it's pivotal to how you experience your mood and how your mood is regulated. Um, so a lot of mood order medications often involve uh, enhancing the amount of serotonin or dopamine in your body because dopamine and serotonin are normally seen as happy molecules. So imbalances in serotonin levels in your body can have serious implications in how you feel. And this can be because you don't have enough of the serotonin or, for instance, your body can't convert it properly from tryptophan into serotonin. So besides all of this, it's involved in your quality of sleep because it's uh, associated with the production of melatonin, which regulates your sleep. But a key function of serotonin, and this is why 90% is in your gut, is that it controls bowel and a digestive function. And it plays a key role in protecting your gut. And one of the things that my research looked at during my PhD is seeing whether uh, people with irritable bowel syndrome, for which the cause is still not very well known, have higher levels of serotonin, because it can be implicated in how you feel pain, for instance, in your gut, and how your bowel function or digestive function works. It's also involved in wound healing, bone health, and if you have a medication that targets nausea, that also is involved in targeting serotonin receptors on your brain. So a whole range of functions, so you can imagine that if there's an imbalance in serotonin, this can lead to a range of problems. Now, a key question that people often think about, well, we have all these happy molecules like dopamine and serotonin, but what's actually the difference between them? And here you can kind of see in, in this Venn diagram where we look at serotonin, dopamine and norepinephrine or noradrenaline. Um, so you will see that they are closely connected. So they all have different functions and they work together. So, for instance, if there's an imbalance in low or high serotonin, you will see that that will lead to, that has a knock-on effect on the other ones, and it will automatically impact on how you feel. But they also have very distinct functions. So dopamine, we know that uh, it's involved in controlling of movement, and so Parkinson's disease is known uh, that you have a low content of dopamine. Whereas serotonin is not implicated in this, but it's very specific for the digestive function, and that's why so many of it is in your gut. And then also they kind of counteract each other in certain ways. So dopamine causes feeling of hunger, and is more associated with reward and pleasure. Serotonin suppresses your appetite, and is more associated with a feeling of calmness. So with all of this, there's a very careful chemical balance between all of these neurotransmitters that we need to consider. Now, my research in serotonin, as I mentioned before, is related to seeing whether we can, in real time, so directly in the gut, can measure serotonin levels and other neurotransmitters. And this is to see what possible underlying causes are for irritable bowel syndrome, which is still very difficult to treat because patients have very different symptoms. So at the moment, if you want to measure anything in your gut, what people traditionally do is they take it outside and they use very slow and time-consuming techniques, such as chromatography, in order to measure the levels. 
So all of these neurotransmitters that convert it very rapidly in your body. So if you take them outside of your body, you're definitely not measuring the actual concentration. You're more likely to look at the metabolites as we've kind of seen in the diagram and how it's produced. So for instance, one of the things I looked at is developing a portable thermal analysis device, uh, which looked at blood measurements. And in this case, uh, we worked with certain receptors these are specific polymers, to guarantee that we could selectively measure just serotonin. And a microfluidic device was a developed made of PDMS. Um, so that means that we had like a very flexible structure. And what you could do is you could take like a, for instance, a finger prick. So just a very, very tiny amount of blood and we could rapidly measure serotonin. So later on, we also looked at developing sensors that can be implemented into catheters so we can use electronic detection in order to look at specifically what happens in your gut. So this is a very short summary of the fascinating science behind uh, serotonin, which is much more than just a neurotransmitter and has a range of functions in our body. So if you want to know more about other neurotransmitters, I also have, for instance, a video that relates to dopamine. Thanks for watching.